Hey guys, I want to give you a little update here on a project I'm starting and which should be done in just the next couple days. I'm going Atmos. I'm doing an Atmos install and I'll tell you what's been stopping me from doing it up until now. Over the past, what's it been, four or five years, Atmos content has been coming out for home consumption. Started off real slow. I mean, real slow. You could count the content the first couple years on two hands. I mean, it was virtually nothing. It's been getting better. And now that Netflix has been broadcasting a lot of stuff, especially their Netflix exclusive produced stuff with Atmos support, there's a much better reason to get it. And I've been switching over the last couple months from ripping regular Blu-rays to now ripping UHD 4K Blu-rays, the Atmos is coming with it. Because unfortunately, it's almost impossible to find Blu-rays with Atmos. They bundle UHD um, with HDR and Atmos. It, it's ridiculous. I think, in my opinion, um, HDR is much more impressive than anything, and that should definitely be on Blu-rays. And Atmos, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot more content out now, but bundling it all with 4K, that's really dumb. It should all be on Blu-ray also, in my opinion, but it's not. So now that I'm moving to running a 4K-based system, may as well do the audio upgrade and do it. So for those of you that aren't familiar with Atmos or DTSX, the Sony alternative, um, it's an object-based surround sound system, and I'll explain what that means. So normally, if you have a two-channel stereo system, you've got your left channel and your right channel. Might be reversed for you guys. Anyway, you've got the sound coming from your source, and it's going through your amplifier, and your speaker gets that signal, right? And they're completely separate. That's two-channel. If you've got surround sound, say 5.1, like this room is here. You've got your center channel, you've got your right, your left, and your two rear surrounds. So you've got five distinct channels. Each one of these, when I play a movie, has a distinct soundtrack. The recording itself, the audio recording itself, has a track for that speaker, and a track for that speaker, and a track for those speakers, all separate. So. Say, for example, you have a scene and there is a guy on a train platform and he's talking, so he's got dialogue, and there's a train moving from left to right behind him, and there's a helicopter that flies from behind him overhead and goes off in the distance, okay? So those three things are making sound in the scene. Normally, with a non-Atmos surround sound system, each speaker has that sound for it already mixed in. So for example, the dialogue is just coming from the center channel. That, that's the only audio track that has any of the dialogue sound. If you unplug that, you're not gonna hear the guy talking because none of it's coming out of the other speakers. When the train goes by, gets louder from one side, goes over to the other, one side gets loud to soft, one side gets soft to loud baked in, that's how the sound is. When the helicopter flies over, you hear some sound coming from the rears and then you hear it from the front and then it fades out. And all that sound is baked in and that's it. That's normal surround sound processing. Atmos does not do that. Atmos does not have pre-recorded sound coming from this speaker and pre-recorded sound coming from the center, et cetera, et cetera. Here's what Atmos has. Atmos says, hey, I got a movie here and I've got the sound of somebody talking and I want that to be front and center. Atmos actually gives directions. It gives coordinates. It gives metadata for where the sound should be in your theater, in your space. So your receiver says, oh, okay, so uh, you're giving me some dialogue noise and you want it front and center. Well, I happen to have a speaker that's front and center, so I'll send it here. Great. The movie says, hey, I got the sound of a train and I want it to go from left to right. 
The receiver says, oh, okay, well, I've got uh, three speakers here that could do that for you. I'll send the sound from left to right on these three speakers. The movie has no idea where the speakers are. It has no idea how many speakers you have. It just says, here's sound, here's where I want it. Your receiver, if it's an Atmos receiver, then translates it and pushes that sound wherever it needs to be. The helicopter might start in the rear, but then flies overhead. And here's where a lot of people kind of miss the point on overhead speakers. It's not just to give you sound from overhead. It's to place the sound. The helicopter sound isn't going to sound like it's coming from a speaker over your head. It's gonna sound like it's right here in my fist and it can move around, it can move in front of you, it can move right over here. It's like watching a 3D movie. If you've ever seen you know, an effect come out and it goes right in your face and it's right there and you can reach out and touch it, that's what Atmos does for the audio. It places the audio in the room, just like an object. And it uses those speakers just to balance the sound. For example, if you're listening to two-channel stereo, you've just got two speakers left and right, you can move your head and if you put it right in between, you know, it sounds like you've got a speaker right in front of you. And if you move your head just a little bit from that perfect point, the sound starts to move. That's what the upper speakers in Atmos are for. They're pushing the sound around to make whatever it's trying to give you a place in space. That's what it does. So that helicopter, you know, it can fly right over your head if that's what they want it to do. So really excited to see how it turns out. Now let me tell you about the different speaker options. So the whole point of Atmos speakers is to give you 3D sound space. And the way to do that is by putting your speakers up, your Atmos speakers up to give you that other vantage point. Because without that, the sound can never feel like it's coming from anywhere but the plane that all your other speakers are on. All right, that's the point. So there are three different types and it doesn't matter which one you use as far as being able to do it. If you have an Atmos receiver, it will prompt you or detect which type you have and it does treat them differently. The first type and the easiest type are Atmos enabled speakers. Now, sometimes they are built in from the factory. These particular clips are just regular floor standing speakers, but they do have a model that looks just like this, except it has a grill on top, just like the front here. And underneath the grill is a little angled speaker, and it's just about the size of this box. So it's at an angle like that, and it fires up through the grill. And what it does is angles up, bounces off the ceiling, and hopefully bounces back down near your seating position ideally right at your seating position. And that works okay. Uh, it's the cheapest option because there's nothing you need to do except run another speaker wire. I gotta clean this up, by the way, I was just moving things around and uh, never got around to it. <laughs> anyway, you just run another speaker wire because this one here, for example, goes to the main drivers. Well, your Atmos speaker is driven by another channel. So you need to run another wire. That's the most you have to do. You're just plugging in another wire. Now, alternatively, if you don't have the built-in speakers, say you bought like these regular floor standing speakers and you want to add them at a later time, there are add-on speakers and they just sit on top, just like that. They're just about the size of this and they're angled. They're not flat. They're not a rectangle box, they're angled. And you just literally set them on top. Now, I don't personally like that just because it kind of looks like crap, in my opinion. I don't mind the ones that are built in because you don't see those. All you see is a nice grill on top. That looks fine. But this looks really bad, at least in my opinion. But that is also a very cheap way to do it. Same thing. All you're doing is plug in another speaker wire. whoop de doo But it does work. The effect does work if you can aim it right and most importantly if you have the right ceiling. Now this is a textured ceiling. This wouldn't be ideal. A perfectly flat ceiling like the walls here would be ideal but the textured still does work. Popcorn ceilings do not work. They are terrible. They will diffuse the sound and also if you don't have the right spacing say for example 
you know, for whatever reason, you can't have your listening position where the sound would be bouncing to because these speakers aren't adjustable. They're just at a fixed angle. I believe they're at about uh, 40 degrees or so. If it happens to be bouncing way behind or in front of your seating position, well, that's not gonna work for you. Now, by all reports, I've seen a lot and read a lot of shootouts between the different types of Atmos speakers. This is consistently the worst. <laughs> so while it's easy and not inexpensive, these are about 400 bucks for the clips just to, to sit them on top here. While it does give the effect, it's not as precise, it's not as dynamic, and just not the best option of the three. The second option is called an elevation speaker, and strangely enough, they mount right on top of the wall behind the main speakers. And they're typically the same speakers that are just set up top here, except instead of setting them here, you mount them on the wall pointing down at about a 40 degree angle, just like that. Now, I don't have even walls here, so I can't do that anyway. You can see I've got that art nook on the right. This one up here would be fine. I can mount that up in that corner. You know, it would just go like that. But up here, it doesn't match. So definitely wouldn't want to do anything like that. This one actually, this option, if you can do it, actually reviews very well. Uh, I'm surprised that it does because the speaker is in such a, a far away, distant location. You would think that your brain would hear the sound coming from the speaker up here, but it doesn't. It still works. So if you have that option, again, if your seating position happens to line up, not sure if mine would or not. Um, it probably would if both my walls were forward like that one over there, or certainly here where the TV's mounted, but not up there. Um, I would, it would be hitting somewhere around there. But if you have that option, that one is a very good one. And again, very easy because you're just mounting speakers to the wall, just like the surrounds back there. And then of course you have to run speaker wires. You can either go through the ceiling or down the wall, whatever your situation calls for. But what I'm doing is in ceiling, which is by all accounts, the very best for performance. And I have the space. I have open attic up there, which you guys have seen because you know I've done all the installs on the rest of the equipment. I got plenty of space up there. Now, both Dolby and Sony are very precise on where your speakers need to be mounted. I have a seven channel receiver, which means it can push seven speakers at a time. And I've got five running now, so I've got two available for Atmos speakers. Better receivers have more channels. Nine and 11 are very common. Beyond that, it gets very expensive and you typically have to run a separate power line from your main box just for say another amplifier because once you get to about 11 channels you're typically at the limit for what you can draw from the wall for one 15 amp circuit so bear that in mind if you're going crazy but the atmos spec does support up to 10 ceiling speakers you can install 10 atmos speakers five pairs with an outboard amplifier and the movies can use it. So it can, it can be very precise. And the more you have, the more precise the effect is. Now with two, which is the bare minimum, that's what I'm running. That's all my amp or my receiver supports. And that's all my room supports because I'm at the limit of the room. If I did four, I would have two in front and two in back of my listening position, but I can't install anything in back of my listening position because there is nothing in back of my listening position. So I'm just gonna do two and be happy with that. But they do have very specific placements and angles that you need to measure out and pay attention to. In my case, the two I'll be installing are gonna be right above the center points of these outboard chairs. The points need to come straight out from your main speakers, and then they give you about a 80 degree angle from your listening position up to the speaker, and that's about where they worked out, about here and somewhere right over there. So I got the parts ordered and oh, here's the other thing that I'm not really happy about. 
So if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a big Apple TV fan. I run the Apple TV 4K. I run an app called Infuse, and that's what serves all of my movie media. Love it. The interface is absolutely perfect. It's just like Netflix or uh, any of the built-in Apple stuff. It's fast. It's slick. It has no problems. The only problem is when you want to use Atmos because Apple, this is not an Infuse problem, Apple refuses to share. They only allow Amazon and Netflix to use Atmos on an Apple TV 4K. Nothing else can. Infuse can't, you know, uh, any, other, any other streaming program out there can't do it because Apple just has that lockdown. I don't know if it's a license thing. They really won't say. There's been a lot of people that have been trying to lobby them to open that up. But as of right now, if you're not watching Netflix or Amazon, there's no way to get Atmos out of an Apple TV 4K. So the next best alternative is an NVIDIA Shield. I hate the NVIDIA Shield overall experience, but it does pass through Atmos. So I will bite the bullet and use that. I'm gonna use Kodi as the front end all of my movies are served over my Plex server, which is running on my computer in my office. And that's simply just allowing the movies to be streamed. So as soon as I hope Apple opens up Atmos to everybody else, I will ditch the NVIDIA Shield because that's going to be the only thing I use it for is just pushing any movie I'm watching with Atmos. So. That's it, I will detail the install. I'm taking a chance on a new speaker company, much like I did Fluence when I ordered these rears. Very happy with these, by the way. In-ceiling speakers are a freaking ripoff. They are just raw drivers with a little bit of plastic. If I wanted the matching Klipsch in-ceiling speakers for these, they would cost nearly double what I paid for the towers. It is a total ripoff. So I've got a uh, no-name brand, basically it's called Mica. Who knows? Tons of great reviews, especially for Atmos. And here's the cool thing. The Atmos spec is very low. You don't need full range drivers. You don't need a ton of power handling. You just need them to match, basically. I got eight inch drivers. They go down past the specification. They handle all the power I'm gonna need. Um, they're nice and flush, so we'll see how they do, but lots of great reviews with pictures from real people, so I'm excited to get those in. Those should be in tomorrow. The rest of my parts will be in the day after that, and it'll take me a day or so to set everything up. We'll see how it goes. See ya.